أعوذ بالله من شر الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبا القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله روحي وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء أما بعد Respected scholars, elders, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله because it's a uh, jam-packed night tonight as we celebrate the birth Anniversary of our second Imam, Imam Al Hassan, alayhi afdal salati was salam. Inshallah, I won't take too much of your time to discuss the third part of the faculty of knowledge which we've been discussing over the course of the last two nights. But inshallah, I'll have these few minutes to wrap it up from yesterday and the day before that, just to get a holistic vision of the concept which is. And that we have explored, which is the concept of knowledge. So inshallah, tonight we'll be talking about two particular aspects. Because we've talked about knowledge and its application. Now we look at actions that are reactions of particular knowledge. And inshallah, we can understand the effect of a particular person's action and his action in reference to knowledge. We look at the first and foremost instance in which we look at the person and how he reacts and how it may affect his friends, how it may affect his family and finally how it may affect himself. But inshallah, we'll conclude by looking at a hadith by the holy Imam, Imam Ali alayhi afdal salati was salam. And inshallah, you can help me to start tonight's topic with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The effect of your actions, because we looked at yesterday how much of a reward you will get when you have a thought process behind your particular actions. If you have knowledge behind a particular act of worship, when you have knowledge in anything that you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how Allah may multiply your particular act of worship by 70, if you have or contain a particular knowledge and you apply it in that specific area. Now let's look at the effects of a person's action, and we're talking about knowledge here. We can see on the first level how knowledge and how actions may affect a direct family member. As an example, we said the idea of karma, in which we have a story where an old man, his son takes him towards the desert after taking care of him, after clothing him, bathing him, it reached a stage in which he could not take care of his father. He takes him under a palm tree. He leaves him there. Then he goes back home. On the way back, he looks back at his father and he finds him smiling. So he goes back and he asks him why he was smiling. And the reply was of the father gives us the example of how the idea and the concept of karma may work. In which the father smiled under the tree. And when asked why he was smiling, he says, I've done the same thing to my father. Therefore, I do not find it out of the ordinary that you do it to me. Therefore, the person takes his father, takes him home and says what? He says, I don't want my son to do what I have done towards my father. So in the first idea is that we have the concept of how our actions may directly affect ourselves. What we do to our parents will directly affect of how we will be treated by our children. On the second, we have a narration from the Holy Prophet in which he goes past a particular grave and he tells his companions make sure you don't go close towards that grave because that person has such a high level of sin that I'm afraid to go close towards that grave however when they went on a particular travel on the way back he comes back to the same grave and he recites a fatiha in which his companions begin to ask him isn't this the same grave that you said stay away from and he says yes he says what's changed he says, that person's son has now become a scholar and Allah has blessed him for bringing up that son. 
Therefore, we see whatever you do, let's say in this instance that you were the scholar in this particular story, that would mean directly that your father does what? Is affected in a positive manner because of your actions, as a direct result of your actions. We know our actions can affect us in the hereafter. When we know if we re recite a particular verse from the Holy Quran, it can embody as a beautiful figure with us in the barzakh that will get us through it, will be our friend, will be our companion. Specific acts that we do within our life will allow the grave to what? To squash us so much so that it says that our, the milk that our mothers breastfed us will come out of our nose. That's how much will be squashed. Actions will lead to that. Actions will give you a blessed barzakh, a blessed hereafter. Direct relation. Effects that we can do nowadays. Actions can affect the longevity of our lives. Either we can increase in lifespan or decrease in lifespan. Based on what? Something as simple as enjoining relations or breaking relations. And we've discussed all these in detail. And I don't want to go over them. But to give you the example that effect of your actions. Whether it be small or whether it be big. Something so small can have such great meaning in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest example we're given is a word that you may say. Imam Zain al-Abidin has a beautiful statement. What does he say? He says, when you sin, never look at the size of the sin. Because sometimes when we sin, and it's very ironic, I was looking at a, a clip. It obviously wasn't, you know, from the school of Ahlul Bayt, from another school of thought. A scholar is wearing a turban, his bead. It didn't even fit into the camera when they were recording. But let's look at what he says. The person says, he was asked, he says, are we allowed to shake hands with the opposite gender? And look at the reply. Look at the reply of this man. Scholar, he's wearing his beard. His he says, it's fine that you, you can not only shake their hands, you can even embrace them. What's his, what's his educational message to give us? He says, yeah, well, the, the men or the guys, they have testosterone they're very active figures and yeah why not you know you can go and shake someone's hand you can go and embrace them and then ask but isn't it a sin i don't want to call that person a sheikh but that's what the person referred to him as he goes sheikh but isn't that haram look at the reply he says it's haram yeah but it's one of the small sins you can get away with it look at the difference imam zain abidin says never look at the size of the sin whether it be small or whether it be the most magnanimous sin don't look at the size look at who you're sinning against. When someone says, whether it be something small or massive, it's the whole idea behind it. And then we referred this particular concept of being in Karbala. Every day is Ashura, every land is Karbala. In that instance, when we sin, we have to judge ourselves with if we were to be in Karbala. And this is the instance nowadays. If the Imam would come now, based on our actions, Based on the choices we make, will we be of his army or of the people that go against him? It's a very, very valid question because I myself can't say on the 10th of Muharram, being at now I know that what is right, what is wrong. At that time, would I know what is right is what is wrong? I can't have that on myself. When we say that we wish that we were with you, O Abba Abdullah, Ya Laytana Kunna Ma'ak, is it a victory in war? Or the victory of martyrdom so that your name is remembered within history that you are making the right choice. You have made the right choice and Allah chose to honor these companions until the end of time. That's the idea and concept you have to put into the question. Now I want to give you an example of an act, something simple. But you yourself can make it into something that's grand or you can make it into something that maybe looked down upon. I'll give you an example, something that's mubah. As you know, we have something called halal and haram, the two ends of the scales, makruh, mustahab and mubah. Mubah doesn't necessarily give you a reward or a sin for doing it. So let's take something as small as drinking water. No rewards in drinking water and no sin in drinking water. It's something that you do. Now let's put it into a context. If, for instance, that water has something impure in it, let's say it had blood in it or alcohol, what does it become? It becomes haram. If that water is the sole reason that you will survive and you have to have it, what does it become? It becomes wajib on you to have, isn't it? If that water, you don't know what's inside, you're unsure, it may have something that is of a bad 
instance, let's say you might think it might have some substance that's bad that may be harmful, becomes makruh, doesn't it? That's something so small. Let's say you recite, and what can we do to make this something that is giving us reward? And we're giving the example. If we say, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Aba Abdullah, something mustahab, but look at the reward that you'll have. One Imam al Sadiq says, Once a person comes to my house, I was praying two rak'at. Two rak'at he was praying. He comes out rushing after the two rak'at. He sees one of his companions sitting down. He asks him, Look at how magnanimous a word can be. He asks the companion, he says, what have you done whilst I was praying inside? He says, I've done nothing, O son of the Prophet. Ya ibn Rasulullah, I was just waiting for you and I drank water. He says, what happened? He says, nothing, I drank water and I said, Assalamu alaikum ya Abu Abdullah. Look at the reply of the Imam, Imam Sadiq. He says, will you trade that word for my two rak'at? We know in our narrations, if there's one sujood that's accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll go to heaven. One sujood. Imam Sadiq is praying two rak'at, which includes two sujood, two rak'u'ah, a qanut, of a ma'soom, of a ma'soom. It wasn't a normal prayer, it was a mustahab, a higher level of reward, a higher level of bounty in the eyes of Allah. He says, I'll swap all that for the words that you've just uttered. For words... Remember the same concept that Imam Zain Abdin is trying to teach us. Do not look at the size of the sin. Look at who you're singing against. On the same reference, do not look at the size of the act of worship. Look at who is watching you, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know, charity, something so tiny can save your life. So many instances, the Prophet of Islam... He would tell his companions, and he says to one of them, he says, this, he says to a, a female, he says, your husband will die tomorrow in a journey. The husband comes back from the journey. She says, what happened? You've told me that my husband was about to die. He says, let's go and ask him. They go to the husband and says, what have you done on this journey? He says, the only good thing that I've done is I had two loaves of bread. I give one loaf of bread to a traveler. He says, that act of charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved your life. He saved your life with an act of charity. Something so small in our eyes, but great in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't look at something so small that you do. And that's in reference to all the ibadah. Smiling. You say it's so simple. Prophet, what does he say? To smile is an act of charity. Is an act of charity. Maybe someone is in a depressive mood. As an example, that smile may bring them towards you. May make them in a cheerful mood. May make their day. You may think, yeah, it's something small, but it can be effective. And something so small, Allah has it in His eyes. Imagine you go out of your way for a mu'min. Imagine you go out of the way. I'm not even going to go into the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised. And that's having knowledge. If we did not have knowledge, we wouldn't have the application. What did we say yesterday? Islam comes down to your actions. I'm going to re repeat the hadith in case anyone missed it yesterday. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, he says, Al-Islam huwa taslim Islam is submission. Al-Taslim huwa tasdiq To submit is to believe in Allah. Al-Tasdiq huwa al-Ada'a. Al-Tasdiq huwa al-Yaqeen. To submit is to acknowledge. To acknowledge is to have certainty. To have certainty is to adhere, to act upon. Al-Ada'a. And after all that, he says, all that is encompassed in your actions. Amal. Your actions is encompassed or is encompassing of everything prior to that. Islam is in your actions. The way you talk to people. The way you represent Islam. Knowledge. That's why we have to preach to ourselves, especially to the sisters. When you carry yourself, you are the flag of Islam. You are carrying the name of Fatima to Zahra. You are carrying the name of Sayyida Zainab. Make sure you carry it in the correct manner. Why? Because it will have an effect both on Muslims and non-Muslims. Because you will be questioned. They differentiate. Not only because you're Muslim or non-Muslim. They will know that you are from this sect This is, and you're not from this sect. And I'll give you a short instance. Do you remember a couple of months ago, maybe it was last year, there was riots in, in the city. Who remembers the riots? They go out and there was riots. 
we found that they did it without any question, without organizing it with the, co with the police at the time. Any, they didn't have any information. But with all that, the police protected this parade. A small group of people went towards the police a week after. And they said, we want to organize a parade. And as soon as they came in, they said, you must be Shia. And we, th we thought to ourselves, we, th we think to ourselves, wait, hold on. How does he differentiate? He says, do you remember the riots that happened last week? And, he said, and we said, yes, of course. That's why we're here. We want to organize. Because I know that's why you're here. We know, and this is not Muslims. He says, we know the difference between the people that are peaceful, that represent peace, the religion of peace, Islam. And we know the people that say that they represent Islam yet go against it. Straight away, a person that's not Muslim, that's in the police force, he knew straight away. By the way, we acted and approached something that we were from a particular sect. And that's the importance. When we act in a particular manner, we want to say and we want to tell the people that we are from the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt. When Imam Hassan, which we celebrate tonight, teaches us the concept of morals and mannerisms when someone comes. And it's a very famous story, but we have to look at it in the idea of education and knowledge. Because we know the, per the way a person carries himself is, is in parallel relation to the knowledge that you have, to the wisdom that you have. That's why you find people of knowledge, such as the Ahlul Bayt, never spoke out of line. And every word was specific wordings, perfect wordings. And exact what the people needed to hear. Person comes towards Imam Hassan, curses him and his father. What would we do? Let's put it in a, into context. If someone looks at us in a wrong manner, <laughs> yeah, Habibi, we have all the boys on speed dial, don't we? One word, or you look at someone in a wrong manner. Everyone comes and after school. Imam Hassan, someone curses him and his father. What does he do? He waits for him to finish. And then he says to the person, he says, maybe the air. You seem like a traveler because maybe the air or the climate has affected you. Do you have a place to stay? Or would you like to have shelter in my house? Are you in need of food? Are you thirsty? We will quench you. We will feed you. If you need clothes, we will give you and clothe you. What does a person do? He's cursing. He's an angry state. Imagine frustration. Anger. All he wanted to do is to anger the Imam. The Imam acts in this manner. Wisdom, knowledge, morals, ethics. The Imam says, the person says to the Imam, he says, you are the household of the prophets. No other person would act in this manner. Salla ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. I'm getting the signal, inshallah. I have to conclude for tonight because we do have a lot of people waiting for the program for tonight but I thank you all for listening attentively and inshallah we can continue this um, particular topic tomorrow inshallah where we look at our a'mal in reference to the hereafter how it embodies what a'mal represents what for the hereafter and how we can grasp these a'mal especially in the month of Ramadan to multiply to elaborate on that which we've already done and to excel ourselves in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that being said, please help me in reciting as Surah al mubarakah Al-Fatiha. But before it, three of your loudest salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.